Hello students, it's Dr. Sansa. I'm here to talk to you today about balancing redox reactions using the half reaction method. So how do we balance reactions like this? They're a little bit complicated and it's not entirely clear what we should do. What we're going to do here is we're going to split it apart into half reactions. This is really important when the reaction is happening in acidic or basic conditions because it turns out that extra protons or hydroxide ions can participate in chemical reactions. We also treat, in, when we're doing this, we treat oxidation and reduction as two separate steps, even though they happen simultaneously. And we get a little creative with the way we're balancing because we're gonna use protons and water to balance out oxygen and hydrogens. And in other words, we're going to be adding these things into the equation. This is totally okay because if you have an acidic solution, for example, there's a lot of water molecules around and there's a lot of H pluses around. We're also going to balance mass and charge. So let's see how it's done. When we're doing a redox reaction, we always talk about redox, which is reduction and oxidation, or oxidation and reduction. Something's always oxidized and something's always reduced. Why does that happen? Well, the electrons have to go somewhere. So we're gonna divide our overall reaction into two half reactions, one that's for oxidation and one for reduction. For example, let's take a very simple case. Here I've got copper ions, becoming copper solid, and I have zinc solid becoming zinc ions. The copper ions are gaining electrons, the zinc solid is losing electrons. So our oxidation reaction is zinc solid turning into zinc two plus, plus two electrons. Losing electrons is oxidation. And our reduction half reaction is Cu two plus, plus two electrons makes copper solid. Gaining electrons is reduction. There's no free electrons in our overall reaction, so when these two things are happening simultaneously, we've got two electrons on the left and two electrons on the right, and they cancel out. Balanced half reactions are not the same as balanced overall reactions because they will have things like electrons in them, which of course is not a normal way to have a chemical reaction, but it's okay when you're doing a half reaction. The half reaction method is a precise method that has a series of steps that you have to follow in order. And so we're gonna talk about the steps first and then I'm gonna show you a few examples of how it works with a real reaction. So the first thing is we assign oxidation numbers and we figure out what gets oxidized and what gets reduced. Then we're going to separate them into oxidation and reduction half reactions. When we balance the half reactions, we have this series of four steps. So we balance everything that's not hydrogen and oxygen, just the normal way with coefficients. Then we balance oxygen by adding water and hydrogen by adding protons. And finally, we balance charge by adding electrons. Once we have both half reactions written, we're going to multiply them by integers so the electrons gained and lost are the same. For example, if our oxidation half reaction releases two electrons, but our reduction half reaction only gains one electron, then we have to multiply our reduction reaction times two. Then we add the half reactions together, cancel anything that's on both sides, and finally double check to make sure that the equation is balanced according to both mass and charge. So let's do an example. In this reaction, our manganese goes from plus seven to plus two. So the oxidation number is going down and it's getting reduced. Our carbon is going from plus three to plus four. The oxidation number is going up, it's getting oxidized. So we're gonna separate out the pieces that are part of the reduction and part of the oxidation half reaction. Let's start with our carbon. We've got C2O4 two minus goes to CO2. The first thing we have to do, remember, is balance all the elements that aren't hydrogen and oxygen. So we're gonna balance out our carbon just the normal way. We're gonna add a coefficient of two here. Next, we're gonna balance oxygen. In this case, we've got four oxygen atoms on the left and four oxygen atoms on the right, so we don't have to do anything at all. We would balance hydrogen if we had hydrogen here, but we don't. And finally, we look at the charge. In this case, 
my oxalate ion on the left has a two minus charge, and on the right I have zero charges. So I need to make sure that the left and the right are equal, and the thing that I have to adjust the charge is electrons. So I add two electrons onto the right side to get my balanced half reaction. Now let's do the reduction half reaction. Manganese is already balanced, so we'll take care of oxygen here. We have got four oxygens on the left. We're gonna have to add four water molecules on the right. Again, this is unique to this half reaction method. Normally you don't add extra things into the equation, but it's okay to do this in this instance because we know that it's taking place in acidic solution, so there's lots of H pluses and lots of water around. So we balance our oxygen, we balance our hydrogen with protons. I have four, um, four H2O on the right, which is eight hydrogen atoms. So I'm gonna need to add eight hydrogen uh, ions over on the left side, eight H plus. Finally, we have to balance charge. Now in this case, it's a little bit tricky, but remember the goal is to make the two sides equal, not to make them zero. So on the left side, I've got eight pluses and one minus, which gives me seven plus. And on the right side, I've got two plus. In order to make seven plus equal two plus, I need to add five electrons on the left side. So now if I add up all of the charges on the left side, it comes out to two plus, and on the right side, it also comes out to two plus. So this is my balanced reduction half reaction. Now we're going to combine the two reactions together. You may have noticed in our oxidation half reaction, we had two electrons that were released, but in our reduction half reaction, we gained five electrons. So we have to find the least common multiple here. And in this case, that'll be 10. So we multiply the top reaction by five and the bottom reaction by two. And then we're gonna cancel everything out that appears on both sides. So we add them all together. Our electrons should always be equal and nothing else cancels out on both sides. Sometimes you have water or H pluses or other things like that that will cancel out and that's normal. The electrons should always cancel out. So this at the bottom is our overall balanced redox reaction. So you can see it's more exciting than the reaction we started with. We actually have water here, we have protons here. There's other things that are there that weren't there before. And the other thing is, we probably weren't gonna come up with these coefficients doing it the other way. So even though this is a long method, it's important to do it, especially when we're dealing with solutions that are happening in acidic uh, or basic conditions and where those ions may participate in the reaction. Now, what do we do if we're in basic solution? The example that we just did was actually for acidic solution. If we're gonna do it in basic solution, we follow exactly the same procedure for acidic solutions, and then we, instead of leaving our H pluses around, we add hydroxide to each side to neutralize any H pluses that are there. And then we're gonna cancel out water where it appears on both sides. Let me show you how it works. This is our reaction that we had. We had 16 H pluses. Now when we make a change like this, it's already balanced, so we wanna make sure we're adding the same thing to both sides. So we're gonna add 16 OH minuses on the left and 16 OH minuses on the right. But what happens when you have OH minus and H plus? They just make water. So that's gonna become 16 H2O. We do have eight H2O already in our equation. We're gonna to have to cancel out eight of them so we're left with eight waters on the left side. The same things that we had before, but now instead of H pluses, we have OH minuses in our reaction. Now you may be wondering, why are we doing the reactions in acidic or basic solution anyway? One of the reasons can be because this allows us to drive the reaction in the direction that we want. For example, let's say we wanted to make MN2 plus. Well, would it be better to do it under acidic conditions or under basic conditions? Which one is gonna favor the formation of MN2 plus? Under acidic conditions, we assume there would be a lot of hydrogen ions around. 
And our hydrogen ions are here on the left side. So if we add a bunch of hydrogen ions, that will drive our equilibrium to the right, helping us make more manganese 2 plus. In basic conditions, we have a lot of OH minus, and that's on the right. It would drive the reaction to the left, and it would decrease the amount of Mn2 plus that we were making. So this reaction actually works better and produces more of our Mn2 plus if we do it under acidic conditions. So decreasing the pH would be the right thing to do. Now, this was complicated. There's a lot of steps. So take a minute and make sure you write down in your own words the process that you follow to balance a redox reaction using the half reaction method. Separating into oxidation and reduction half reactions, balancing for mass and for charge, taking into account your water or H pluses if you're in an acidic solution, converting those into OH minuses if you're in basic solution. Thanks for listening. I hope this is helpful and that you have a great day.